I say kill her and be done with it. No call for that, Wynn. She ain't likely to find a way back to the wagon train from here. Supposing she does, I wouldn't put nothing past her. And how's she gonna get there? Don't ask me. Don't ask me how she does nothing. She ain't human. That's a fact. She's haunted. Just the same. All we agreed to was to carry her way up here in the hills and dump her. That's right. She ain't gonna get far. No food, no water. All right, but I'm warning you, we're making a mistake. We're giving you your chance, but there ain't gonna be no second one. So stay away from our wagons if you know what's good for you. Jamie! Wait! Your little girl, Delcy. What are you talking about, Marie? Tomorrow. Tomorrow her throat is going to hurt. It's going to be bad, Jeremy. There she goes again. What did I tell you? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to know what she's talking about. What about Delcy Marie? She's shocking. She may die. And all the other children, they be sick. You satisfied? She's just trying to get even, trying to scare us. Ain't that what you're trying to do, Marie? Gwen, come on. Let's get out of here. She's giving me the creeps. Others, please. his tracks. Yep. He's a smart one, though, ain't he? Yeah, but I think we're gonna get him this time. Well, we better. The rate he's been getting our strays, we ain't gonna be able to run no beef down here at all if we don't. Come on. You.
he's been since he was born. You know, I could have sworn I saw something else up on that rock. Nah, you just excited over seeing old big boy here, that's all. Uh, I saw something. Hey, Hoss, come here. Let's see how bad she's hurt. Where in tarnation she come from, anyhow? Where and how? There's nobody living within miles of here. I'll go get my canteen. You got off lucky, young lady. Just a few bruises, a wrenched ankle. Nothing to worry about. Any pain? No. Well, let's try walking for a spell. There you are. Right, now take it easy. Don't put too much weight on right away. That's it. Yeah. And you better not walk on it any more than you have to. Oh, and uh, if you should notice any headaches, I want to know at once, understand? Thank you. You are kind. Not at all. Get some rain, don't you think, Ben? I'll get you a use some. I think she'll be all right. Huh? All she needs is to stay off her feet for a few days and rest. Who is she, do you know? No. Boys found her up at uh, Red Bluff Peaks. Miles from anywhere, lying there unconscious. Just looked down the gully and there she was, all by herself. No horse, no buggy, no burro, no nothing. Looked kind of spooky to me. Oh, come on, us. Well, I met her be on my way here. Say hello to Mr. Martin. I surely will. Good night, Ben. Good night. Good night, Doc. What are you doing out of bed? Oh, it, it's all right. Well, you shouldn't have that weight on your foot. You better sit down now. Are you feeling all right? Oh, yes, I'm better. Oh, uh, my, my name is Cartwright, Ben Cartwright, and my son, Horse. You are very kind. Oh, you, uh, you sure gave us a bit of a scare there. <laughs> For a little while, we... She was very beautiful, your wife. What? So young when she died. That was very sad. Who told you that? It's the music box. It 
Makes me see pictures. Oh, you think I'll go get the doc back? Oh. What, what, what do you mean? Uh, it, it, it makes you see pictures. I don't understand. But I see her very clearly. She was your father's wife, but she was not your mother. Your mother died before her. Paul, well, I'm gonna go out and help Joe in the bar now. See you at 12. But how, how do you know all this? Oh. It's, a, it's just a game, I, I, I guess. Uh, I don't even know your name. Marie. Marie. That was her name. I know. What do you mean, you know? I meant... Well, it... It is a name that suited her. The music box, it seemed to say. Marie. Uh, what's your last name? You don't want to tell me? Well, some, some reason for you not wanting to tell me? Are you, are you in some kind of trouble? If you are, I'd like to help you, if I could. Why should you? Well, for one thing, because you come from the same part of the country that she came from. Louisiana, isn't that right? You know the Bayou people? Yes, I know them quite well. Very well. But she was not from the Bayou, your Marie. Not from the swamps. She was from New Orleans, a Creole. I mean... Now, look, somebody had to tell you that. You couldn't have guessed that. No, I, I guess it. It's not so strange to guess. Many people guess many things. No, it's, it's strange that you should have guessed that. It's different. It's... Uh, you're, you're different. It, no. No, I am not different. 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 What's the matter, Hoss? You want your feed? Yeah, I reckon I am a little bit bummed. Don't seem to have much appetite this morning. Oh, I think we ought to mark that down on a calendar. Any day he's off his feet. Oh, come on. <laughs> Aren't you feeling too well? I feel fine, boy. It's just... Well, it's that... It's that spooky gal we got in the house. We got to get rid of her somehow. Well, why is she upsetting you? Well, she... She don't exactly upset me. I, I just don't understand her. I, I can't explain it. It's... Well, it, it's like that music box. Now, how did she know that music box belonged to little Joe's Ma? Explain that. Well, I, I don't know, Hoss. Well, somebody, somebody could have told her. Where? When? How? I don't know. I could. How'd she know little Joe's Ma was dead and that, that my Ma had already died before her? How'd she know all that? Well, there must be some explanation. Another thing. You ever notice how she looks at you, them old big eyes of hers, and it's, it's like she sees you, and yet she don't really see you? Like she knows something that nobody else knows. Oh, come on. Well, you, are she talking like she's some kind of a ghost or something? How do you know she ain't? Oh. Well, morning, Marie. Good morning. Good morning. Have a wonderful breakfast waiting for you. Come on, we got a wagon load of grain to pick up in town. How does your... Uh... How does your ankle feel this morning? Oh, it's much better, thank you. Well, good. Uh, sit down. Hey, 
What are you looking at me like that for? Oh, excuse me, I, I did... Little Joe, do you go fishing? Do I what? Do you go fishing? Well, yeah, sometimes I do. Why? Oh, oh, nothing. I, I, I just wonder. Come on, little brother. We got work to do. Yeah. Hey, look, sometimes when I, uh, sometimes when I go up on a lake, you can come with me, but we can hook into a big bass. Okay. all that about, young lady? He is in danger, Mr. Cartwright. Well, uh, what kind of danger? Something bad is going to happen. Marie, let's have some breakfast, huh? No. No, there is something. A fish and arrow. And something black. He must be careful. It will harm him. What will harm him? A fish and an arrow. Now, Marie, that makes just no sense at all. I would bring harm to you. I must leave your house. Come on, Marie. Come on, now, you're an intelligent young lady. No. No, it's true. They all told me. I'm voodoo. I'm Marie, voodoo. Marie, you're talking about superstitious nonsense now. It's on. not nonsense. Of course it is. No, they all tell me. Since I was a child of ten, I bring the evil. I, I make my father to fall from the boat in the swamp. He loses his arm now, Marie, you on the know. wagon train. I make the horse to fall and break his leg. I, oh, I make the wagon to catch fire. Oh, and I, I make a child to choke to death. No, 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 Marina, stop it. No! It's happening. It's happening again. I make it happen to your son. It's happening. The blackness, he lies on the ground. His eyes. Oh! Oh, mon Dieu, his eyes. I... Now there... There is... Nothing. I... See nothing. That wind, Joe. Yeah, looks like we got a pretty good rain coming. Boys, tell me the name of a doctor in Virginia City. Yeah, Dr. Martin. His office right across the street from the Palace Hotel. Thank you. Sure looks like a storm blowing right into West Valley. Hey, is that where you're coming from? The wagon train to California from Louisiana. We're better down there for wagon repairs. You boys will excuse us. We gotta get our daughter to a doctor. Louisiana! Is that where that spooky gal came from? That's right. West Valley, that's close to over there where we found her. Looks like she might have run away from that wagon train, reckon? I don't know. If so, I wonder why. All right, Delsey. It's, it's just a sore throat. The doctor will fix you up in no time. Mama, 
Yes. Mama, am I going to die? Yeah, I guess you must be right, Hoss. She must have been with that wagon train. No, why don't you just ask her? No, I asked her, but she wouldn't tell me where she was from. She's a frightened girl. Well, what are we going to do with her? Well, first off, I guess we'd better find out whether she came with that train. How long do you think it would take to ride out to the West Valley? About an hour? Yeah, I'll go, Pa. Oh, no. Not you, Joe. Uh, I have something else for you to do. Horace, why don't you ride out there, see if her folks are with that wagon train. And if they are, tell them Marie's here and she's well, and they can come and get her at any time. Yes, sir. Well, what's that job you got for me, Pa? Oh, yes. Uh, take this into Dr. Martin in town. There's a note inside which will explain everything. And uh, he'll give you something to bring back to me. Yes, sir. Yes, who is it? Oh, it's, uh, it's me, Marie, uh, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, come in. It's not locked. Oh, I, I didn't waken you, did I? No, it's all right. Are you, uh, feeling better? Oh, yes. I've not slept like that for weeks. Oh, good. Well, you'd better take the weight off your foot. It's so, it's so peaceful here. One feels happiness. Contentment. Well, I'm glad it's agreeing with you. <clears throat> Marie, I... There's something that I, uh, I'd like to tell you. You did what you had to do. What? My mama and papa. You have sent word to them that I am here. Now, who told you that? I know. You couldn't. I try to tell you, but you do not believe me. I am voodoo. I see things happen before they happen. Now, Marie, nobody can do that. Oh, I know you are trying to help me, but me, nobody can help me. I make the terrible things to happen. No, Marie, nobody can make things happen. What have you got there? Where'd you get that? In the bayou. When I was ten, my nurse gave it to me. I must wear it always. If I don't, I will die. Um, now look, Marie. Marie. Marie, look at me. Stop believing these things. Much rain? Yeah, over there in the West Valley mostly. Well, what'd you find out at the uh, wagon camp? Well, I found out that her ma and pa are there. 
Oh, did you tell Marie was with us? I sent word to him through a fellow by the name of Wynn Grady that I met on the outside of the camp. That's as close as they let me get. How come? Well, they, they got sickness in that camp, Paul. Bad sickness. And a bunch of the young'uns have got what looks like diphtheria. And that ain't all. This, this fellow Grady tells me that this girl up here brought it to him. song for. Let up for a spell. We promised Jeremy we wouldn't move till he got here. Wonder what's keeping him. Maybe Delcy took a turn for the worse. There ain't no sicker than my youngin'. Or mine. Please, I find out what you're going to do. Please, she is my daughter. Well, what about our kids? All of them sick. Some of them dying, all on account of her. <laughs> Leave them alone, Francoise. Leave them alone. We must do what must be done. Your own daughter, Rene. You can do this to your own. She's voodoo. Madame Dove told us. And always I've told you this. Madame Dove was a superstitious old woman out of her mind. That you hired to nurse Marie when she was sick. And now our own daughter. She has become one of them. She's voodoo. That's right, ma'am. We don't like this no more than you do, but we gotta get rid of her once and for all. Oh, no, please! What kept you, Jeremy? She's dead. Oh. My little Delcy's died about a half hour ago. Choking. Like she was being hung. Let's get. Oh, please. Oh, no, please. That burning, I got right up to him, and something spooked him. He took off like breeze like I know who that horse belonged to. Well, I, I saw his brand. He's one of the Jameson Brothers' studs. Jameson Brothers? Yeah, that fish and arrow brand. That's right. Well, Doc Martin said the stuff in here ought to answer your questions, Bob. Joseph, there's a black stallion loose around here somewhere. Stay away from him. Uh, why? Just do as I tell you. Don't ask any questions. What you getting mad at me for, Bob? I didn't do anything. Seems to be a storm coming up. Why don't you... Check the stock in the north pasture. Yes, sir. Guess we better check the west pasture. Yes, sir. I'll get your horse full.
You little she-devil. You know any prayers, which ain't very likely. You better start saying them. Look at her. Standing there just as calm as a statue. What's the matter, little she-devil? Ain't you scared? Don't you feel no human feelings at all? Careful, Wynn. She may be a working one of her spells. Not anymore, she won't. All right, let's get on with it. Why'd you do it, Marie? Why'd you take my Dulcie away? She never done you no harm. Can you bring her back to me? Can you bring her back to me and to her ma? Marie, can you please? Jeremy, talk sense. She ain't about to do nothing like that, even if she could. Maybe she can. Maybe she can take away all the sickness since she brought it on. Can you take the sickness away? Can you do that, Marie, before you die? Our children are so sick with the diphtheria. <laughs> Delcy's up and died. Heisters. Take the diphtheria away, will you? Please. down now you're making a mistake mr. Cartwright it's far enough she's a she-devil now you let us have her so you could put her at the end of a rope you let her down Where are you from? We come from the wagon train. And her ma and pa knowed what we was coming over here to do, and they didn't try to stop us. So why did you? Why are you taking her side, Mr. Cartwright? Jeremy here lost his young'un. That's right. She told me my little girl was going to be sick, and that's what happened, just like she said. Now my little girl is dead. Well, do you think that she made her die? All she did was warn you about it. You grown man, you talk as if you're from the Dark Ages. I'll tell you my little daughter's dead. Look, I'm sorry about that. But if Marie wanted her dead, why would she warn you? Because she's a devil woman and she ain't fit to live. Marie did tell us about those bad things before they happened. The rain. The rain is coming back. It's worse than before. The wagons. Oh, mon Dieu, the wagons. Move them. Or oh, they will drown beneath the great wall of water from the mountains. The women. The women are screaming. The children. The children. Flash flood, it's possible. The children. The rest of you stay here if you want. I'm getting back to my family. The children. The children. The children. I still think you're making a mistake, mister. You're gonna be sorry. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. All right. Hey, Paul. What's going on, anyhow? Did you find little Joe the way I asked you to? Oh. Yeah, I found him, but he, he didn't want to come down. He won't stay after that black stallion. Don't stay away from that animal. It's all right, Marie. It's all right. Little Joe, the fish, the arrow.
You see that? He settled down the minute he seen her. Oh, it's good to tell little Joe to come back here. Yes, sir. Why won't you? What do you want from me? Won't you? Won't you answer me? Why must I be different? I wait for your answer. Andove, I am coming to you, just as you said, down into the darkness. Madame Dove, do you hear me? You are right. Everything you taught me, I am yours forever and ever. From the darkness I come, to the darkness. I return. Ah! Hey, stop it! I killed your son. I killed your son. I made that horse come here. I killed your son. Marie's warning that saved his life. You know, I was wondering why I bit my head off about that black horse. Well, if you'd listened to me, you wouldn't have been hurt at all. Then she didn't make it happen. Oh, of course not. <laughs> you see, so many people have been telling Marie that she's bad and evil that well, she's come to believe it herself. My poor Marie. Even I did not understand her. When the men came back to save the wagon from the flash flood, it was because she warned them. Oh, yes. Of course. You see, your daughter has a rare gift, ability to, to be able to foretell things. Foretell? Yes. A doctor in Europe has been making, uh, making studies of exactly this very thing. He's been doing some research with a number of people, and well, he's found even a, a peasant girl who, without education, can, can see things happen before they've happened. Did you show Maggie these? Yes, I showed Marie these, but she's so mixed up, she doesn't know what to believe or who to believe. That's why I had my son, Hoss, bring you out here, Mrs. Juma. You must make Marie believe that this ability of hers is not harmful. Hoss, will you ask Marie to come down, please? Yes, sir. But how can I face her? What can I say? Well, you're her mother. I'm sure you'll find the right words. Oh, but it was I who exposed her to all these terrible things. 
I sent for a remedy woman to treat her with herbs when she was sick, instead of getting a real doctor. I did not know that Madame Dove was Mama Loy. Mama Loy? Voodoo Queen. Voodoo Queen? Well, no wonder Marie... My poor baby. Please, can you forgive me? I didn't know. I didn't understand. Did you know those men were coming to kill me? I could not stop them. What can I say? No. I should have thrown myself in front of their horses. And Papa? You see, my mother and father, they know I am voodoo. No, Marie. You have been sick for such a long time. Now it's time to put an end to it. Please, Marie, come with me. I will help you. And Papa? I will make him understand. And if he does not, we will go together without him. But he will not stay away from us long. In time, he will come to us. Trust your mama, Marie. I know I do not deserve this, but please, I beg you. Oh, Mama. Mama. Now we go. Bug is ready. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. Thank you too, Mr. Cartwright, for bringing me out of the darkness. Whatever this gift of yours is, use it well. And with your mother's help, I, I know you well. Bye again. Have a good trip. Thank you. Boss. Yeah? I see something. The Virginia City race tomorrow. Yeah? And Abba Lucy's gonna win. Bet everything you've got. Thanks, Joe. What are brothers for? Get up! Get up! I think she's going to be all right, Pop. Yeah, I think so. Joe, wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody made a real effort to understand whatever is strange and unfamiliar, rather than fear it and try to destroy it?
last year, but the heat's been burning up the upper pastures. We had to move the herds. Major, how is he? As good as can be expected. Doc dug the bullet out of him. Old boy horse wouldn't let us move him. Hi, man. Oh, my goodness gracious, what are you trying to do with yourself? Well, I was standing just outside the door there when they come galloping up. And as soon as I seen it, one of them was Carver Lassiter. I yelled to Johnny here to get my scatter gun. Well, Carver recognized me and opened fire, and then Johnny started shooting. I never hit a single one of them. Well, it all happened too fast. Well, at least they didn't get what they come after. We still got Harry Lassiter locked up in there behind them bars. How many men try to break him out? I believe there's four men. There's still five days before the hang, and they're going to try again. And that's for sure. How many men do you have backing you up? And that's just the trouble. Oh, Johnny, will you stop fussing over me? I ain't no woman. That's the trouble, Ben. There ain't very many men in this town willing to stand up to Lassiter's. Ain't that the way of it? Everybody cries out for justice. They want a nice, clean little town, but as soon as trouble comes along, everybody heads out for a hiding place like a desert rat in a sandstorm. Well, you certainly in no shape to go after them yourself. That's why we're sent for you, Ben. We want you to take Roy's place. That, that's if you're willing. Harry Lassiter killed my son in cold blood. Judge Simpson sentenced him to hang for it, and I intend to see that he does. Major, I think you're forgetting that the rest of them Lassiters is equally determined that Harry don't hang. We need help, Ben. And it's going to be awful hard to get men to fight them Lassiters, believe me. Those murdering jackals have got to be stopped. All right, Hoss. You better get on home and help Joe and the others get that herd through Eagle's Pass. No, Paul. You're staying, I'll stay with you. Joe can handle that by himself. All right. In that case, I hereby appoint you a deputy. Roy, you gonna go on home or we're gonna have to carry you home? No, I ain't going home and you ain't gonna carry me. Now, this cot is just as good a place as any to keep off my feet, and that's all the doc said I had to do. All right. Well, I guess we better get to work, boys. <laughs> You mean a whole town full of people and nobody shows up at us? Ben, you telling me that nobody else answered your call for help? Well, fellas, looks like you talked a little bit too soon. Reverend? Gentlemen? Are these the only men that showed up? Yeah, I'm afraid so, Reverend. Uh... Reminds me of some of my congregations. The greater the need, the less the response. If there's anything I can do to help. We've already sent a telegram to the army. If we can just get some troops in here, we can smoke them out. It's my father. They're going to kill him. Please help him. Please, somebody do something. Reverend, please, you have to help him. They're going to kill him. Just take it easy now. What, what happened to your father? Well, Carver Lassiter and three other men came riding into the yard. And they pulled their guns. And they marched right into our front room. And they forced my father to go with them. And they told me to bring the sheriff this. Judge Simpson is number one. Every day at sundown, there'll be another. If Harry Lassiter hangs five days from now, they hang, all five of them. You better believe we mean it. You better believe it. There's going to be a shortage of a lot of important people in this town. <laughs> uh, 
This is it. Get down. Hey, Judge, I'll help you. Yeah, just... Well, there you are, Judge Simpson. You can't say we didn't give you a nice, safe journey. Might I ask just what do you intend to do with me? Well, now, that, uh, that all depends. Yes, sir, that all depends. Now, you do be careful. Come on, Judge. Carver. Yes, Ma. What's holding you? Bring him in. Oh, Mrs. Lassiter. You're Judge Simpson. By what right have you had me brought out here? I demand that you... You're not sitting in that courtroom now, Judge. Remember that. Mrs. Lassiter, you are going to regret all of this. The only regret we're going to have is keeping you alive four more days. Don't worry, Judge. You're going to have plenty of company. Unless they set my son free, you're just going to be the first of five hanging from that tree over there. Now, time up. Do you seriously believe that Mrs. Lassiter intends to go through with her threats? I sure do, Reverend. I sure do. Elizabeth Lassiter became a very bitter woman when her husband died. But five, Ben. Five lives for one. I know. <laughs> the answer to your wire just came, Ben. Oh, thank you. The army can't get here for a week. Well, that's too late to do us any good. I guess it's up to us. Well, I'll stay here with Roy. You fellas get ready to start combing the back country right in the morning. <laughs> get some rest, gentlemen. See anything? We deployed for several miles along the river, but if anybody had ridden that way, they certainly knew how to cover their tracks. Yeah, we didn't see nothing either. Like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Mr. Dietz, you got any more ideas that the Army taught you as a scout? Yep. Let's call it quits for today and get on home. It's almost sundown. That was the threat. Somebody else each sundown. We better get home and protect our families. Let's go, men. Careful, Ben. He's slick as a fox. Don't try anything. Too early, ain't it? Well, the cook at the hotel want to get home before sundown? Of course, if he did, why, uh, ain't no place he can go if they want to get him that they're going to get him. <laughs> oh, that's good. That, that is very, very good. You seem to be enjoying this. Wouldn't you? 
I'll tell you something, Cartwright. You and me, we just naturally think different. I mean, you and that family of yours, you, uh, you got everything. Me, Ma, and Carver, we ain't got nothing. I mean, it just figures that we're gonna hate you, and you're gonna hate us. <laughs> I don't hate you, Harry. But I sure do feel sorry for you. Well, thanks, but I can do without it. It's a long, lonely walk to the gallows. Oh, are you out of your mind? You know I ain't gonna take that walk. <laughs> Sorry to inconvenience you, driver. I understand you have a passenger for Virginia City aboard. I got several. You flag me down just to ask a fool question like that? Nah, this is a particular one I've got in mind. His name's Merrick. L.B. Merrick. I uh, understand he's a prosecuting attorney in town. I'm L.B. Merrick. What do you want? Now, this is an emergency, Mr. Merrick. Maybe you uh, better step out and read this. As you can see, it's very serious, Mr. Merrick. Now, if you just mount up, Mr. Merrick. Yes, sir. Of course. I, uh... Wonder if I could impose on one of you gents to deliver this note to Sheriff Coffee in Virginia City. Indeed, I'd be happy to, sir. I'd appreciate it. It's rather important. Get up! Where's the sheriff's office? Right down there, sir. Sheriff Coffee? Oh, oh no, uh, well, Sheriff Coffee's just... Recovering from a wound. Uh, I'm taking his place temporarily. His name's Cartwright. Hugh Gwilner. Hmm? I'm the hangman. The condemned man? Been years since I was called to Virginia City. Uh, I'll be building the gallows across the street, and I'll be posting a notice on your wall outside, uh, with your permission. Certainly. Oh, I almost forgot. 
I was asked to deliver this note to the sheriff. Judge Simpson, now L.B. Merrick. Two of our leading citizens. Yeah, and who will they try and get next? <laughs> we can't ensure the safety of everyone in town. Not with just the eight of us. Settle on us. Well, there must be something we can do. Yeah, yeah. We can crack down the Lassiters. That is going to take a bit of luck. Because hmm. all we found today was deer tracks, cougars, and a couple of wagon trails. Yeah, they're a clever bunch, all right, especially that Ma Lassiter. <laughs> what are we going to do? Sit around here all night join, or go out and put a hustle on and try to find those hostages. Oh, we're going to get some rest. That's what we're going to do. We need it. We only have three days left. Yeah. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night boys. Thank you. Good night, Major. Us? It seems they think a dollar a day is not worth antagonizing the Lassiters. Well, you're going to be finished in time? Oh, that I will. You can depend on it. I've never missed an engagement for a hanging yet, and I've officiated at quite a few these past 15 years. split up again. What chance have we got against the Lassiters if we split up? Violates basic military tactics. Major, we ain't got much time left. We cover a whole lot more territory in two groups. Come on, fellas.
Good time in the morning. We'll meet here at dawn. And I'm, don't go counting on me. This gout of mine has been killing me all day. I don't know how much more of it I can stand. Another thing, I'm beginning to think I haven't seen my family in weeks. You're not the only one with personal problems. See you in the morning. Major, don't you want to talk to Paul? I wish I had something to talk to him about. Find your new room. Do you like it? You remember me, little Joe? What's happened to you? Why are you doing all this? Why, well, I'm going to kill you, little Joe. And them, too, unless that sheriff gets some sense and lets my boy go. Mrs. Lasseter, they're not going to let Harry go. What good is he going to do to kill us? Might help even the score. You don't think I'd forgot what your pa and the rest of them noble citizens did to destroy my husband. Oh, now, hold on, Elizabeth. The bank did what it had to do with that loan. It had to turn it down because Will was too deep in debt already. Everyone on the board of directors of the bank agreed on it. And forced him into going bankrupt. He wound up killing himself. Yeah, and we've been running like wild animals ever since. Now, you don't think I'm going to let him take my boy Harry, too, do you? Go on, tie him up, Carver. Frog, oh, Blackie, give him a hand. You bluffing, ain't you, Elizabeth? I meant every word I said. Well, whatever you say will be done. You ask me to ride my horse off a cliff, I do it. You know that. But this doesn't make any sense at all. Kurt, when you were working for Will and me, were you in the habit of telling us what we did didn't make sense? Because if you did, I don't recall it. No, I kept my mouth shut. Even if I disagreed, which I admit wasn't too often, but Will, most of the time, knew what he was doing, and you did, too. But that boy in there is right. Killing them isn't going to solve anything. Elizabeth, listen to me. Robbing banks is one thing. Holding up stages, raiding towns, all that was for a purpose. To be able to buy the land that Will promised you and the boys. And sometimes we had to kill to accomplish it. But this, I'm begging you, Elizabeth, don't ask me to. Not in cold blood. of a feud that started years before I ever came to Virginia City. Relax, well, nobody's dead yet, Mr. Merrick. No, but I will be. If they don't do what she asks. In two months, my wife's going to have a baby. 
as hanging Harry Lester with my child growing up without a father. You talked a different tune when you demanded the death penalty for Harry Lasseter at that trial. Are you trying to say that verdict should be reversed just because your life is in danger now? If it was in my power to make a deal with Mrs. Lasseter right now, I'd no. do it. All right, you stand on principles if you want to. I'm more interested in living. Mr. Merrick, we're all interested in living. Cartwright, come here. This you gotta hear. <laughs> it's gonna kill you. suggest I do. We let him go. We can always put a posse on his trail after we get little Joe back safe and sound. The decision's yours, Mr. Cartwright. Little Joe's your son. We got no choice, Paul. Roy. Now, Hoss, you look here. Harry Lasseter in there has been tried, convicted, and sentenced to be hung. And it is my sworn duty to see that that sentence is carried out. Now, if you or anybody else lets him go, I've got to arrest him for obstructing justice and happen a prisoner to escape. <laughs> Paul. Sorry to hear about little Joe. How's Ben taking it? Well, he figures we'll go ahead with the hanging. I reckon Mr. Weems decided not to go with us today, huh? Gentlemen, we're wasting time. We've got exactly two days to prevent a mass slaughter. It's your neck size, Mr. Merrick. What do you mean? Well, your time's running out, boy. You ever seen a man hang before? It ain't very pretty. Your face turns blue. What do you want of me? <laughs> Nothing. I just like to see you squirm. You squirm real good. But can you squeal? You see my friend over here. If he starts anything, you squeal real loud here. Carver.
What's the matter, Ma? What you been up to in there? Just arranging for a little uh, extra insurance. Well, you better get them horses saddled. It's almost sundown. Come on, Kurt. We got work to do. Carver. Be careful. Yeah, sure, Ma. I'll watch it. You and Harry all I got. go again. There's no way to stop them. If we were all like you, Mr. Merrick, there wouldn't be. I wonder who'll be next. Foolhardy, Joseph. I can't believe Mrs. Lassiter will go through with her threats. No, I'm not so sure about that, Reverend. I've got to let that Lester boy go. Can't you see that? Shut up, William Merrick. I have a life to live, things to do. Why have I got to die? Why me? Please, Mr. Merrick, get a hold of yourself. I don't want to die. None of us want to die, Mr. Merrick. But all of us in life must face that possibility sooner or later. The thing is to face it with dignity. Don't give me any of your theological nonsense. There's only life or death, that's all. Is that what you truly believe, Mr. Merrick? Well, what else is there to believe? We believe it all in God. Joe, what are you planning on doing? I'm planning on getting us out of here. No, no that, that's no good, Joe. Unfortunately, the Reverend Holmes and I aren't cut out for this sort of thing. He's right, Joe. We just get in your way and slow you down. Well, look, I can't just leave you here. Well, I, I don't see that you have much choice, Joe. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. 
Yes, we'll gather at the river. The beautiful hey, shut river. up! He got away, but he's on foot. Well, he can't go far. It'll be light in half an hour. Hunt him down. I want him dead or alive. Hunt him down! Didn't you hear me? I said hunt him down. Kill him! Major should have been here long ago. Yeah. They all should have been here long ago. Well, we'll give them five more minutes. What do you suppose happened to them? Same thing has happened to this whole town. Look at that street. This hour of the day, there ought to be people out there on it. Where's Albion Dietz? They aren't coming, Haas. Why not? They've got wives and children to think about. What do you expect? They're scared. The whole town's scared. What about you, Major? Hoss, I've led men into battle and seen them die all around me. I've killed men myself, and I've been shot at more times than I care to remember. I wouldn't think it possible for me to be scared of anything, but I am. I reckon that means you ain't going with us. No, I'm not. I've lost one son already. I don't aim to lose another. I'm staying here to protect the rest of my family. Well, that's the difference, me and you, Major. Part of my family's out there somewhere. I'm gonna go find him. I have to go alone. Hoss, it's plain foolishness for you to go out there alone. He ain't going alone, Major. I'm going with him. You can't. What will that town say about the rest of us? Well, I reckon that's sort of your problem, Major. Come on, John. Yeah. Blackie, look up in that scrub brush. I'll go around. Cartwright! You're a dead man! Here he goes! He's still running! Over to your left, I hear him! I see him! Where'd I go? Are you up there? Yeah! Stay with him. I'll take this side. There he goes! Blackie, over your way. All right, right. All right, Cartwright. Give it up. You can come out breathing or bleeding. Make your choice.
shooting stopped. Mrs. Lassiter, just what do you intend to do now? Unless they free Harry, you and everybody responsible for him being in jail will die. And what will that accomplish? Will it bring back your son? They've been my whole life, my boys. Everything I've done since Will died has been for them. All I wanted was to give them the home and the land they should have had. Is that so wrong? Ask yourself, Mrs. Lassiter. Does any purpose justify the methods you've used? The men you've killed? I'd kill the devil himself to save my boy's life. It's all I have. It's all I live for. If they hang Harry, there isn't anything that can keep me from killing you. You're wrong, Elizabeth. There's been enough killing. Stay out of this, Kurt. Stay out of it, Elizabeth. I've stayed out of it too long. It's gone too far. Carver's dead. <laughs> I should have done that a long time ago. Maybe then we both would have had a chance. Garfer's dead. And now they'll hang Harry. All because of me. Oh, Kurt, what have I done? It's me they should hang. Where's Mrs. Lassiter? She's inside, little Joe. Carver's dead. She knows. I'll be with you. Thank you, Kurt.
Hi, Mike. How are you, little buddy? Fine. You think you can beat me this time? Hey, I wouldn't try it, Hoss. You remember what he did to your hand the last time? Yeah, but I've been practicing. I think I can take him this time. Okay. Ready? Ah! Ah! Okay, okay, that's enough, enough. Doggone. Uh, I told you, that Michael's got a grip like a grizzly bear. Oh, what a grip. Oh. Is that the mail you brought for us? Yeah, it sure is. Where's your pup? In the barn. Come on. All righty, I'll give you a piggyback ride. Oh! Oh, you're getting too big for this. Hey, little show. Yeah. What Samaritan mean? Well, where'd you hear that? Sunday school? No, my dad said it. He said that the Cartwrights are good Samaritans for helping us. Are you? Well, I don't know. It's awful kind of your pa to say so, but we didn't do anything he wouldn't have done. Oh, gone. If you want to be one, you let me win at hand squeezing there once in a while. <laughs> you see him, Elijah? No, Mr. Thorpe. Very dark here. Joe brought that mare over. Just a second, Mike. What are you doing up there anyhow, Evan? Yeah, we got some stray owls in here. We're trying to evict them. Hey, Elijah, you're not going to kill many owls with that broom, are you? Well, so far I kill as many with broom as Mr. Thorpe with gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's enough for now. When Elijah starts making remarks, I figure it's time for a cup of coffee. You boys got time? That yeah, sounds good to me. Well, say, I want to see that animal first. Hey, that's a fine looking horse. Part of doctoring I hate. The death watch. Nothing I can do now but wait and hope and try to think of a way to tell that boy when it happens. Doc, isn't there, isn't there something more you can do? I believe in miracles, Ben, but I don't ever count on them. Mm. Mm. Now, don't try to talk, Evan. Just, just lie still. It's bad, isn't it, Doc? Well, it, it's uh, hard to say. I'm... Don't lie to me, Doc. I ain't got no time for lies. I'm going out pretty quick now, ain't I? I'm doing all I can. It's not your fault. Ben, Mike know how bad it is? Yeah, I, I think so, yes. Let me see him, will you? These are all fuzzed up, seems like. Come on. Tell me, did you? Did you beat horse at hand squeezing today? Yes, sir, I did. Well, you're a strong fellow, all right. And a good boy, too. Please, Dad. Please what, Mike? Please, don't die. I'll try not to, Micah. I'll fight and I'll pray. Dad, please. Don't, Dad. Please don't die. 
my dad. Please. Elijah, why don't you put Mike to bed? He's in a coma. It's up to God now. Sleep, Michael. Did you hear what Dr. Randall said, Elijah? He said that only God could help my dad. Oh, Dr. Randall, wise man. God. What is God, Elijah? God. God is the most strong thing ever. All people come from God, and God know everything. God make everything to happen. How do you know? You're just an Indian. Indian white man. All same God. They teach Elijah at Trader Post Church. Did he make Dad get shot? Make all things happen. Then I hate God. No. No, not right. God knows better than people. Always have reason. Have good reason. But why would he want to hurt Dad? God's stronger than people, smarter than people. He have reason. He watch over everybody and everything. Even over birds he watch. He live high in the mountain, all alone, like an eagle. Where does he live? High in the mountain. All alone. What's he look like? God? Uh-huh. Oh, I think God must be a strong man. Maybe his face a little tired from all the trouble people do, I think. His eyes are cold like fire. His eyes see into soul. In the mountains. Mm hmm. High in the mountains. All alone. <laughs> Doc, what should the boys do if Evan wakes up? He's not likely to wake up, Ben. If he does, though, just come and get me. Good night. I'll see you in the morning, house. Right, Paul. I'll see you in the morning, Joseph. Joseph. Oh, I'm sorry, Pa. I was just thinking about the boy. I remember when I was little, I, I realized one day that all my friends had two parents and I just had one. And sometimes when, when you used to go away on trips for a few days, I used to wonder what it would be like if you didn't come back. Oh, it used to frighten me. Of course, I, I never had to face that. Just the thought of it scared me that way. I just wonder what that little fellow must be going through. That's a pointless story, I guess.
late for you to be up, isn't it? I couldn't sleep. How far is it to that mountain, Joe? Oh, that one, that, that's very, very far away. Why'd you ask? I just wondered. Elijah said that God lives in those mountains. Oh, well, see, that's a... That's an old Indian legend. They used to... They used to think that mountain was sacred. The, the place of God, they called it. What's a legend? Oh, legend? It, it's kind of a story, you know. Like they teach in Sunday school? No. No, not exactly. See, in the, in the Bible... God's in the Bible, isn't he? Yeah. Elijah said that God could help my dad. I think Elijah's right. I see. Good night, Joe. Off in the middle of the night like that. I think Michael go see God. Michael did what? God live in mountain. Michael go see God. Ask him to help Father. Did you tell him that? Do you believe it? <laughs> he believed. Michael go see God. You know, I think he's right, Hoss. Boy, asked me how far away those mountains were. He's got a pretty good head start. Let's get going. Oh. Joe, wait a minute. We can't just leave Mr. Thorpe. All right, you ride into town. Get Doc Randall. Bring him out here. In the meantime, Logic can stay with Mr. Thorpe. Right. I'll see if I can get a couple of deputies from Roy Coffee. We're going to need all the help we can get. God take Michael to Mountain to help Father. Man should not interfere. <laughs> Never to ride a lamed up animal. And you're sure enough lame. And if I can't ride you, there's no point in taking you along. So, Mule, you can go home now. Well, go on. Go home. I'll be all right, Mule, honest. But you're all lame, and I don't want to hurt you. I can take care of myself, Mule.
Oh, Mike. Hey, you sit up nice and slow. Why don't you drink some of this? It'll warm your tummy up. That's a boy. Yeah. How's that head of yours? Sore. Yeah, let me look. I guess it is. You really got an egg on there. We'll have the doc take a look at it. The doctor? Yeah, as soon as we get back. I can't go back. I got to stay. I saw him. See, see, God isn't isn't something you can always see, like a like a tree or a rock. I did see him. Up there, little Joe, it was God. And when was that? Just before I fell. Yeah, now, are you sure that wasn't just after you fell? No. That's why I fell. He scared me. What did he look like? He had a tired face mm -hmm. and eyes like cold fire. Eyes like cold fire. Just like stars. Now, Mike, Michael, you know, you're old enough to know the difference between telling the truth and telling a lie. I saw him. I'm not telling a lie. Oh. Well, See, sometimes people, people want to see something so bad that they really think they see it. No, it, it's not, it's not really lying, but... But I saw him. I've got to stay. I've got to ask him to help my dad. You know, God answers everybody's prayers. Everybody's. But sometimes the answer is no. What are you going to do if... Well, if God's answer is no. I'll give him a licking. You say your prayers. Sure. Dad always says grace at meals. And we go to church sometimes. Why? Well, when you pray, you're praying to God. And he's right inside of you. Same as, same as he's inside me, he's inside everybody. But he's not a man who lives up on a mountain. Don't you see? There's a man living up in the mountains right now. don't it? Well, that's what I am, boy. A wild eagle. I kill for my food. I live off this country. I sit up here on top of this mountain and I see all that goes on down below me. Don't you get lonesome? I've gotten used to it. Now move on. You know me, don't you? Uh, something about your face. I'm Tom Kane. Tom Kane, Summit Ridge Massacre. The very same. Well, I thought you were dead. I am. Or I was, till you came along. Move on. your fancy? It's about as much as you do. Kid, it's in them canteens over there. 
There's a crick across that knoll. You take them canteens and get them filled, you hear? Yes, sir. And don't get any notions about running away, because you got no place to go. Why should I run away? I came to see you. What? You know me? Yes, sir, I know you. Well, all right then. You do as I tell you, do you understand? Why'd you hurt my father? What are you talking about? You shot my dad. Well, I've been blamed for a lot of things I didn't do. I don't even know your father. Yes, you do. Lysha said that you know everything. Now, what's all this talk? You do as I tell you. Michael, go on, do what he says. We'll talk about your dad later. Go on, Mike. Yeah. Later. You tie your horse up to that tree. And you get inside here. I can keep an eye on you. Go on, move on across. Now, what are you doing bounty hunting a kid like that along? I'm not bounty hunting. You said you were looking for me, didn't you? No, not exactly. His father was wounded in an accident. He's not expected to live. What's that got to do with me? Well, an Indian who worked for his father said that God lived up here in this mountain. He came up here to ask God to spare his father's life. And he thinks that I'm God? Yeah. It's kind of funny, ain't it? <laughs> Me, old Tom Kane. You know, in a way, I am God, though, ain't I? I think that'd take a little stretch of the imagination. Does it? Well, you just think about that, you and that boy. Your lives are in my hands, aren't they? The power's mine to give a life or to take it. Oh, that's a good feeling, you know. That's a real good feeling. You ought to know it pretty well. Yeah. You sit down. Right there. You put your hands behind your head. Move. You're a tough kid, aren't you? No. Yes, you are. All you kids are tough. You gotta be to survive this country. I was. You wait till you get old like me. And all the things you've done, they come back on you. You know, even up here alone. Up here alone. It seems crowded sometimes. The memories and the faces. Yeah, that's called conscience. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have a crutch to fight that. Like this. No, go ahead, kid. Go ahead and make it easy for me. Be tough. I'm gonna kill you anyway. You just saved me the trouble of getting drunk to do it. Coals are still hot, and that's little Joe's bedroll. They can't be too far away. Little Joe dead. Elijah. This is God's place. God killed little Joe. Elijah, you quit that kind of talk here. Spirits take little Joe away. How you think we find him? Look, Elijah, that's superstition talk. Now, let's get this straight. There ain't no spirits on this mountain. They ain't but two people, and they desperately need our help, and we're going to find them. Boss, Bob and I found some tracks up ahead. What'd I tell you? They're going up on that mountain. There's something mighty strange about them tracks, Hoss. Yeah, what's that? 
Well, me and Charlie could make out where little Joe and the kid was walking, leading a horse, but there's another set. Who do you figure it could be way up here? I don't know, but let's find out. Sergeant? Well, what are you looking at? Is it all right to talk about my dad now? It'll be all right when I say it's all right, not before. Now, what are you staring at? Not much. Now, stop staring at me. Ken, you go on down the slope there and gather up some wood. It gets cold up here in this mountain. Listen. Oh, I hate kids. You know that? Yeah, I've heard stories. Summit Ridge, huh? Yeah, there were a lot of little Indian kids that night up on Summit Ridge. We rode in there, the eight of us. Drunker newborn calves. Killed him. Boy, did we kill him. Man, I was no worse than killing a bunch of young wolves. You know, you get them when they're young, before they're old enough to take your scalp, that's what we figured. And that government, <laughs> that government put a price on our heads for what? I was no worse than killing young wolves. That's why I led that raid. Well, those Indians have been here now, burning and raiding right now, that's why I stopped them. He curses me for it. Takes my wife. Takes my daughter. Takes my land. Takes everything I had. And he drives me here to this blasted mountain. What are you telling me this for? You think I'm going to feel sorry for you? No, I don't want your pity and I don't want his either. You don't want it or you don't think you can get it? Where should I put this wood? Hey, put it over there. Ah. What are you doing? Just wanted a drink, if you don't mind. A drink? Well, no. No, I don't mind at all. <laughs> Here, I'll, uh, I'll pour you a real good drink. You might as well enjoy it. As long as you can. <laughs> hey, kid. Come here. If you can take this, over to him. Without spilling one drop, your father will be all right. Yes, sir. I won't spill it, sir. Kane. Tell him you're lying. What? Tell the boy it's a lie. Well, now, kid, I ain't exactly lying. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just sort of testing you. That's all.
we gotta get after him. You just lay here and take it easy. <coughs> oh, she don't understand. Michael's gone after him. He might kill the boy. I know, you told us all about it. Just don't worry about nothing. How is he? He'll be all right. That Indian just took off. Took off where? I don't know. He just lit out of here like he's on fire. I guess he's scared stiff of them spirits of his. Well, we can't be worried about that now. Look, Joe, we're going to track that fella down. You stay here and just take it easy. Don't you worry about nothing. We'll be back as soon as we can. You've done everything you could do. Let's go, Bob. trying to do, kid? Did I pass the test? What? My dad always said that God tests people to see if they're worthy. Did I pass? Yeah. Yeah, you passed, kid. You, uh, come on with me. What's your father like, son? He's just a father, like everybody else's father. No. He must be pretty special. Or you wouldn't be doing all this for him. He must be a pretty good father. He is. a miracle happen to save my father's life. Now listen, kid, I... I don't know where you got this cockeyed notion that I'm... Well, I'm not who you think I am. And I'm not sure that I believe in him, but... Look, kid, I... I'm just a guy that's on the run. See, I'm, I'm the guy they preach the sermons about. You know, the, the, the lost sheep or whatever they call them. Now listen, kid, 
I'm nothing. Just that. Just nothing. Lie is my friend. He wouldn't lie to me. You're testing me again, ain't you? Please, just say Dad will get better. Now, kid, listen to me. And listen to me close. Hey, fellas. This tracks are right over that little knoll. Let's go. Keep away from me, kid. I'm fighting for my life. They won't hurt you if you tell them who you are. Look, you stay back, will you? Just calm down, Bob. If he's got that kid up there with him, we sure don't want to be shooting that direction. He could hold off an army from that mountaintop. What can we do? We can't just sit down here and let him take pot shots at us. I think I can get across that clearing and up the other side. It's a good idea, Charlie. You can try it. Bob, you keep me covered. Make sure you don't shoot any lower on the top of them pine trees. We sure don't want to hit that youngster. I'm going to try to outflank him. Elijah, now here. testing you now. I'm telling you the truth. I ain't God. I'm about as far from God as a man can get. I can't save your father. But, but let me tell you something, kid. If there is a God, and he cares about someone who believes in him, someone like you, no matter how tough things get, your dad will be all right. My father, no, he couldn't save him. <laughs> 
maybe he saved himself. Father wants to see you. He's alive? Yeah, you bet he is. Them up. It, it, it's like a miracle. You know, Paul, I think that's just what it was. <laughs> 